my meditation, oftentimes I just think of the women I've met who have lost their babies. In those moments so that it gets so hard I want to quit, I go back and I think about those women and that gives me the motivation to keep going. There are 15 million preterm and underweight babies born every year around the world. And one of the biggest problems they face is staying warm. The most common solution is a light bulb. We also see old space heaters and babies just placed right in front of them. And about once a month, you hear a story in the news of a baby literally being burned to death by one of these machines. This is the Embrace Warmer. It came out of a design class at Stanford. The challenge was build a baby incubator that costs less than 1% of the cost of a traditional incubator. But as we traveled to Nepal and India, we realized we needed something for a village healthcare worker or mother or midwife to use that didn't require constant electricity, that was portable. We got back to Stanford and we bought every baby-related thing we could find. Brainstorming and prototyping. When the class ended, we had this concept. We knew we were onto something. And so we just decided we're gonna take this forward. The core technology is this pouch of wax, a phase change material that melts at human body temperature. And it stays at the exact same temperature for eight hours at a stretch. The Embrace Baby Warmer. that's now in use in hospitals and saving babies' lives. Today, Embrace has helped over 150,000 babies across 10 countries. We don't get to keep track of a lot of these babies. We don't know what happens to them. But when we started working with this Beijing orphanage, they reported to us that they found a less than two pound baby that was abandoned on a street. And they brought him in and kept him in the warmer. And they told me it was the first time a baby of that size had ever survived in the orphanage. Four or five months after that, we got the note saying, we've adopted this little boy and, and thank you for saving his life. <laughs> he was just so happy to be alive. Oh, good oh, good. And so I think that's part of the connection he has with Jane. I think he's grateful. He may not be able to say it or express it right now, but just in who he is, he lives life with abandon. They gave me um, a little present. It's a guardian angel holding a little boy. Charlene said to me, it's also all of the angels who are kind of watching over you and embrace as you guys embark on this work. I think we sew two of them and I just bring them. The issue we're working on is inherently a very emotional issue. But the first time I ever cried in front of my team, I was horrified. And then one of the guys who, who worked for me came up to me afterwards and he said, Thank you for doing that, because that gives us permission to be vulnerable also. And I think when you can be just authentic and true to yourself, that's when you're at your best, and that's, that's when you're gonna be the best leader.